Hi folks, this is Rockman Pat with Northwest Treasures. Time for another Geo Talk. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about viscosity. Now, what does viscosity have to do with rocks? Well, a lot actually. Uh, you may be most familiar with the term viscosity as it relates to automobile oil and uh, your various viscosities of oil help keep the engine in good working order during hot weather and cold weather. So you want oil uh, that is thick and oil that is thinner. So the same really uh, measurement is also true with lavas. Now viscosity is a measurement of the resistance to flow, primarily used in terms of uh, liquids and fluids. And uh, it's hard to realize when you look at the lavas here, we have actually four basic types of lava. Basalt is the darkest, andesite, dacite, and rhyolite. Those are the four basic lavas. And you'll know that one is extremely dark. The, one, uh, the other one on the, the other end is extremely light. And uh, this, uh, this color has to do with the minerals that these lavas contain, primarily uh, relating to quartz. Quartz also has to do with their viscosity. And so as you move up the scale from basalt, if we start with basalt, we're dealing with a lava that's low in quartz under 50% of it is quartz. So mostly you're looking at iron in that particular lava. And uh, its viscosity is extremely low because the amount of quartz in it is low. Uh, the next lava listed there is andesite. Uh, it is um, a lava containing more quartz than basalt, somewhere around 50 to 50, 55, 60%. And then day site containing more quartz yet, closer to 60%. And then rhyolite on the end uh, can contain as uh, high as 70 to 90% quartz. Now that quartz is the determining factor for the viscosity of lavas. Before these lavas were rock, they were liquids. They flowed, in fact, uh, with basalt, you can uh, go online to Kilauea in Hawaii and actually watch basalt flows. It's a lava that moves fairly quickly because its viscosity is low. Uh, andesite, dacite, and rhyolite are a little more rare to observe, although andesite uh, was um, characteristic of Mount St. Helens as well as dacite. But uh, rhyolite, uh, very pretty lava. A lot of jewelry is made out of lava. And because it's high content in quartz, uh, it makes uh, excellent jewelry to polish. Now, when we apply the viscosity idea to these lavas, of course, it's tough to do that now. You can't go back and I don't have the facility to remelt these lavas and try it. Although I'll tell you, if you get out to the big, uh, or to Oahu, the island of Oahu, and uh, you can actually see a demonstration at the Bishop Museum in downtown Honolulu where they actually melt basalt lava and uh, pour it onto the ground so you can see how it flows. So I'm gonna kind of give a little demonstration here, and this is something that uh, mom, you can do, or dad, you can do with your children as uh, you study lavas. And uh, so I've used different fluids that have different viscosities. Uh, I've got, um, now you can use any fluids you want, but I've got honey out here, carol syrup, chocolate syrup, and vegetable oil. All of these have different viscosities. And uh, this is how you can do it. I've got a little chart here. Um, it's got molasses lifted there, uh, listed there, and you can actually use molasses if you want, but uh, we didn't have any molasses, so I got out the chocolate syrup and used it instead. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to place a little drop of each one of these fluids on here, and then we're going to uh, look at the, at the viscosity uh, as they flow down the sheet. So 
if uh, you're doing this at home, you want to prepare uh, a sheet that looks like this. I've got it actually on cardstock so it doesn't uh, really absorb easily into the paper. And then you'll see over here I've got some teaspoons that uh, have the, the fluids already in them. That's, I think that's a good idea. I've tried just pouring the stuff out of the bottles and it is messy if you do it that way. So get yourself some teaspoons and uh, pour out some of the, the fluids. And then I would start with the thickest one first uh, so that you don't have them, um, you know, flowing all over your paper. But I just pour out just a little bit, just a little drop. And uh, here's actually, this is Caro syrup here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one here, not under the molasses. And uh, honey, chocolate syrup, I'm going to put that over here in place of the molasses. And then the messiest of them all is vegetable oil. Okay, now when I've got all those on, I'm going to quickly uh, lift up the paper so that they actually flow. And the viscosity will be the resistance to the flow. And uh, so I'll just put them up at somewhat of an angle and just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you can look at your chart here and you can ask the question, which fluid here is the least viscous? Well, if you look at your chart, it's the vegetable oil, which means that its resistance to flow uh, is not not high at all. This would be comparable to your basalt lava, even though it's a different color. Uh, which is the most resistance to flow, or which has the highest viscosity? And of course, that would be your caro syrup. And uh, that would be most like your rhyolite lava. And uh, then the honey and the uh, chocolate syrup look uh, roughly the same. Uh, those would be more like your uh, andesite and your, your dacite lavas. So that is viscosity and uh, it's a good, it's just a good picture of what the lavas do when, when they uh, have been melted. Um, again, remember that lavas don't come out of the ground as rocks, they harden. And uh, so while they're fluid, though, they do have viscosity. And that viscosity, remember, is a product of the mineral quartz. The higher the amount of quartz, the uh, higher the viscosity. The lower amount of quartz, the lower viscosity. And I hope that helps illustrate the, the idea. Thanks for watching.